so here we have a question which says the string 11101 is not in so we are given few regular expressions here and we have to tell which of the regular expression cannot derive this particular string if you look at the string it is 11101 okay so these kind of questions are actually very very easy to solve if you know the trick if you look at the uh, string carefully we can see that there are one two three four four number four ones are there so even number of ones if you look at this it can derive right four ones it can also derive because there are two so can derive one two three four it can also derive four ones if you look at this one one zero one if in one go it cannot derive the string this one because it is giving in 1101 okay so this is giving odd numbers and we require even numbers okay so option D is right for this because it is not the right option all others can generate this but not D so here we have a question in which they are asking it is known as universal gate okay first of all what is a universal gate a universal gate is a gate which can implement any boolean function without need to use any other gate okay it means just by using that gate we can implement any other gate like and or xor uh, xnor and everything okay and we know what are the answer for this nand and nor both are universal gates so two options are right for this question so here a question is let px be the statement x spends more than five hours every weekday in class okay now then where the universe of discourse for x is the set of students okay universe of discourse for x is the set of students now the quantification there exist x for not px means in English okay first of all let's just try to derive it what they are trying to say in these sentences okay let px be the statement where it says x spends more than five hours every weekday in class where the universe of the discourse for x is the set of so it is for all x px all right and now if we negate this sentence, this will be negation of for all x px. If we introduce negation inside it, it will be there exist x not of px. Okay, so they are saying which of the sentences representing this. So obviously there exist x. There is there exists a student who does not spend the negation of this does not spend more than five hours every weekday in class and option A matches with that so option A is the right answer for this for this kind of question no you don't need to go in depth the the answers are very straightforward they are just asking for the sentences there exists so there is a student who does not spend and the negation of hold the sentence in this they are saying there is a student who does not spend five hours every weekday in class it is totally changing the state statement which is not right also in this there is a student who spends more than five hours every weekday in class it is not negating the sentence while we have to negate the sentence now in this there is a student who spends five hours every week in class this is not the opposite it is talking about exactly five hours so also it is not right we have to negate it it has to be not more than so less than five hours so that's why only statement a is clearly correct for this option so here we have a question the binary equivalent of this is so we know how to solve this kind of question by multiplying it by two and have to just add the digits by that okay but that question is quite lengthy and I don't think you need to spend that much time on solving these kind of questions so I am going to tell you the trick okay you know the standard way how to do this by multiplying this by 2 2 2 and get the digits okay out of it so I'm going to tell you the trick which is very easy and you can follow this kind of trick during the examination okay so let's solve so point one just try to understand okay point 1 is point 5 we know okay now 
we have four places here so it is 0 0.1234 okay 0 0.5 0 0.6875 is greater than 0 0.5 so definitely there will be one in first place okay right now second one now we have uh, we have two combinations 0 0.1 either 0 or 1 1 now 0 0.10 is 0 0.5 and point, point 0.11 Point one one is point seven five, all right, and it is bigger than this one, so this is not right. So it is one zero, one zero. You getting my point? Point one is point five. This number is greater than this, so obviously we will take this one into consideration. We have taken it now. After choosing the first digit, second digit can be one zero or point one one. Okay. If I take point one zero, what is the uh, what is the conversion of this? This is point five, and what is the conversion of point one one? It is point seven five. It is greater than this number, so we will discard this and we will take the point one zero. So second one is zero. Okay, so these two options are discarded over here. Now B and D are the options. Now if you look at this one zero one and one zero one, these two are matching up to here, so definitely there will be one. Or also we can check also. Okay, now we have to fight for the first, uh, for the last digit. So it is one zero one. Now it will be either one or zero. So it will be one zero one zero. So for one zero one one, let's check for this. Okay, it will be what? One by two plus one by eight plus one by sixteen, which turns out to be point six eight seven five. And clearly, one zero one one is the right answer. So it will take hardly uh, one or one and a half minute if you do by this. Just by just use your intent uh, intuitions. Like point uh, point one, it is point five. Point one zero is point five, and it is greater than this and less than this point seven five. So one zero will be the next one. These two options are discarded. Now B and D. For B and D, up to this here, the places are same. So one is as it is. Now for the fourth fourth digit, it will be either one or zero. If it uh, solve for the fourth digit, you are getting as it is. We, I don't need to check for this one. So very easy. Okay, do these kind of question by these tricks. So here we have a question in which they they are saying the octal equivalent of this particular dec decimal number. Okay, so they are saying zero point five one three in decimal. What it represent in octal? Okay, so there are two ways to solve these kind of question. Like f uh, first one is try to convert it into base sixteen and then back to base eight. It is quite easy, but Today I am going to solve it by using the standard method by multiplication. Okay, so let us start. So how we do is 0 0.513. Actually this one is quite easier and this easily clicks in your mind during the examination. So into 8. So when I multiply it, fi uh, 0.513 into 8, it, turn, it calculated as 4.104. Okay, now 4. Take it a outside now we will extract this one uh, the left of the uh, decimal will extract it and write this one again 0 0.104 into 8 this is multiplication multiplied by 8 now this is 0 0.832 take out 0 outside so it's 0 now take 832 0 0.832 into 8 so it is 6.656 take out 6 outside okay and here this one this side so it is 0 0.656 into 8 now calculate it it will be 5.248 take out 5 and this one here 0 0.2 4 8 into 8 so this one is 1 point nine eight four. I guess take out 1 now next one is 0 0.984 multiply by 8 it will be 7.872 
take out 7. Up to here is enough to tell which of the option is right. So it will be 0 point from here begun. So it is 4, 0, 6, 5, 1, 7 in octal. Okay. So option C is right for this. So here we have a question in which they are saying the complement of the function f is this. So where f dash is. So we have to find the complement of this particular function. So f is equals to x prime y z prime plus x prime y prime and z. So they are trying to, to find the complement of this. Okay. So first let me tell you a few basics. Like suppose if there is a plus b whole prime. Whole prime means complement. The complement of this will be a complement dot b complement. Plus is converted to multiplication and prime. If we have a dot b whole prime then it will be a prime plus b prime. Okay. Now one more just for the sake of giving the kind all kind of example. Like suppose if I have a prime plus b whole prime complement. So it will be definitely this will be multiplication a and b. Now a is already complemented and one more comp complement complement is nothing. So a I mean to say a complement whole complement is a. Negation two times means a. So it will be a dot b complement. Okay. So I have given you enough example. So let's solve this. So let's try to uh, find the complement of this. So whole complement of this. So first this plus will be converted to what? Dot and there are multiplication in between them. So multiplication multiplication will be converted to plus and plus will be converted to multiplication or dot. Okay. So it will be an x prime is already there. So let's just take uh, let me do this in steps. So it is x prime y z prime whole prime multiplication x prime y prime z whole prime. Now let's introduce this complement inside. So it will be x plus y prime plus z and x plus y plus z prime. So this is the answer which is matching with the option A. So here we have a question from C in which they have given us some program and have to tell the output of this following program. Okay, it is very easy and pointer arithmetic is used in this and you have to be very careful while solving question in pointers from C. Okay, it is also important part and they do ask more, uh, most of the question from this part only. Okay, so there are few things you have to learn about the pointer arithmetic and you will see straightforward answer for these kind of questions okay so they have initialized an array here one two three four five six with c six elements on this and then they are assigning a pointer in which what they are assigning is address of a plus one if you look at this what is this doing what it is doing it is first it is pointing to this a this one is a okay and our pointer is pointing to this address of a okay so address of a is if it is 100 then it will be 100 what they are doing is address of a plus 1 now it will go out of this array and will point to the next address out of it because they are saying address of a plus 1 after this complete array then they are adding one so we are out of this scope okay so it is somewhere here pointing now now what they are doing in the next statement printf percentile d star star means dereferencing pointer minus one so when we are here if i reduce one then i will be pointing over here and they are printing value on this position so answer for this question is six only okay not one two or runtime error it is the program is right and the answer is six for this you can also compile this code okay you will get the six as the answer so here we have a theory question in which they are asking what is the meaning of using extern before function declaration. For example the following function f1 is made extern. So we are using our extern keyword here and what they are asking which option is right. 
Option A is saying function is made globally available. Second is saying extern means nothing. F1 function is same without extern keyword. C option function need to be declared before its use. And fourth option is saying function is made local to the file. Okay, fourth option is clearly wrong by the way. Functions are obviously locally available to its file. Now, now extern keyword. Now this this keyword is actually used to extend the visibility of our function. Okay, in a particular sor source file. There, uh, if there there is a source file and we can make many modules out of it. Okay, many. So what it does is it extends its visibility. We can I can use this function anywhere in my particular source file. Okay, so basically an extern function or a member can be accessed outside the scope of the dot cpp file. Okay, in which it was defined. In which it was defined. And option A says it right. Function is made globally available obviously in the particular source file to all its modules so here we have a very beautiful question from C in pointers so they have given a program and we have to find the output so what does the following fragment of C program print so they have given a character array and then some pointer pointing to it and then we have to print some particular statement and have to tell which one is the correct output for this okay so this is quite easy but quite confusing also so let's solve it so we have a character array which is saying I have to reduce it T it is an array so T S E T 2018 all right all right so this is our array see now they are pointing a pointer to its okay so if the it is actually aliasing so if the base address is 100 p is also storing 100 and it is pointing to the starting address so it is 100 this will be 101 102 103 if i'm taking each character size to be 1 byte only 104 105 106 107 all right so what they are doing is they are printing some particular statement which is p plus p of 3 minus p1 okay before coming to this kind of question first clear your um, concepts in pointer arithmetic then this question will be very easy for you okay so the first statement is p what is p pointing uh, right now here the first one so it is 100 what is P of 3? P of 3 is array element. So P of 3, it is P of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so what is P of 3? P of 3 is T. This one is T. And what is our P of 1? P of 1 is our S. Now, you must be confused what, it, what they are trying to do. Okay, so they are subtracting T and S. Now, what we have to do we have to find their s key value and then we can re, uh, subtract their s key values all right and if uh, you now if we even don't know the s key values of these particular alphabets then don't worry you can assume it like suppose it is 100 then p q r s then t then it uh, t comes after s so it will be 99 okay st okay so 100 minus 99 is 1 so it is 100 plus 1 in pointers we know we have to use the pointer arithmetic if it is pointing to 100 now it will be pointing to what the first location here it is pointer arithmetic okay so it it will point to here and now only this much part is printed so answer is what SET 2018 option is not given in this okay but our answer is definitely SET 2018